This is episode number 201 of the Abar Above podcast. This is the first time I'm saying this and I'm very excited about the name change. Um, but in this episode, we will be talking with Leah from Gastronom Blog and Gastronom Cocktails um, and talking about some considerations about starting a new bar at home. So stay tuned. <music> All right, everybody, welcome to the Abar Above podcast. I believe this is our first official Abar Above podcast. Since we uh, um, had the Mixology Talk podcast, we changed the name, and this is the first episode we're doing it in, so definitely welcome. So to kind of start this off, uh, we thought we would kind of go right back to the basics and do a deep dive into building at your home bar. Many of us during COVID, um, you know, got exposed to new hobbies. One of those hobbies, hopefully, was really, really good cocktails. Um, so we have uh, Leah from Gastronom, Gastronom Blog, and Gastronom Cocktails, if I'm not mistaken, correct? Yep. Perfect. Well, welcome. Thank you so Hi. much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So we're going to learn from Leah um, and get her insights into kind of the first steps and many steps down the road of um, kind of starting your journey down craft cocktails. Um, so I am excited. Um, I'm sure this is gonna be a very expensive conversation, Leah, because I have a feeling I'm gonna be adding a, a bunch of ingredients to my home bar as well. If influence people correctly, yes, it will be. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect, so um, we'll have a shopping list at the end. We'll have <laughs> show notes and recipes, I'm sure. Um, so yeah, it should be a fun conversation. Um, it's something, like I said, I'm really, really excited and looking forward to. Um, and if you haven't checked out their blog, and their Instagram, I highly recommend it. Um, would you mind telling us quickly about your Instagram handle and blog uh, um, site? Yes, we are Gastronom Blog for our website and we are Gastronom Cocktails on Instagram because it just made more sense if people were searching for cocktails to have that in the name. So they're, they're the same entity, just a little different naming, but pretty much everywhere else we're Gastronom Blog. So that's what we went by. Perfect. Great. We'll definitely go check out um, those two websites and the social media um, for sure and get a lot of inspiration. Trust me, you, you'll you'll like it. <laughs> I hope so. That's why we're here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so first of all, Leah, how did you get started into this crazy world of craft cocktails? Can you kind of paint the picture of how it all started? Well, I attended bar in college. Um, uh -huh. Now I'm talking like, you know, shooters and basic dump and go cocktails as we always like to call them you know rum and cokes that kind of thing um so i wasn't really exposed to craft cocktails per se until a little later but mm -hmm. i actually went to school for hotel and restaurant management and it really opened my eyes to fine dining and just the better things in food and cocktails and so i started exploring a lot of things with that and um I ended up working in a restaurant uh, up here in Omaha. And after we got married, then we had kids. And so then I decided to stay at home because that just made the most sense for us. And after our second son was born, I went, okay, I'm bored. I need something to do. And I didn't wanna go back to work full time. I didn't wanna go to my 60 hour work week, which is what restaurants usually are. And so I said, how about we start a blog? And I think it was our sleep deprivation that we kind of thought we could do food and restaurants. We thought restaurant reviews would be a good idea with a baby. I don't know why, see, that's why I said it was sleep deprivation because we were crazy. Um, and so we were like, let's just do this. And I think we got like three restaurant posts done and we're like, this is stupid. We're not gonna ever do this. And so we're like, okay, let's do food. So we tried that. Food blogging is a very hard world to break into. It is, there, it's, it's saturated, it's great. You can find so many good ones, but it is very, very hard. And we made a cocktail just randomly and it went like hotcakes. And we went, wait a minute, we now have a niche. And so we've stuck with that since 2013 and here we are. <laughs> Holy cow, 2013. Wow, that's incredible. Well, <laughs> congratulations, that's awesome. Well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, well, it's funny because we have two boys, uh, two kids, both boys. And the idea of starting a restaurant review, you know, I think they're two and four right now, just makes me so anxious. Like the anxiety of walking into a restaurant, just like, ah, I don't want to deal with it. No, I was like, as I said, I think it was the sleep deprivation that we thought that was a good idea. And so, 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm, I'm right there with you. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> So I think that's kind of how uh, a lot of people kind of get started as well. It's like, you know, they probably dabbled in it in the, in the past, either professionally or, you know, entertaining and stuff. And it just kind of takes on a life of its own. Yep. Um, I think that's exactly how I started um, as well. So uh, definitely, um, I think it'd be a story that a lot of people can relate to. Um, so kind of the topic of the blog today or the podcast today is going to be um, starting that home bar, starting taking those first initial steps. Um, and I'd love to get your insights, um, on how that, how you would recommend doing it now after you've had so much experience, um, you know, building your, brand, all our building mess your ups. <laughs> well, and that's part of it, right? That is absolutely hundred percent part of it. I, I think I've dumped more cocktails down the drain in development, um, than I probably have made, uh, yes. <laughs> so, oh, yes. <laughs> early days anyways. Um, so let's say you have a friend and they're just now getting into it. You know, they had the the pre-made margarita mix. And they're like, you know what? I think I want to take it up to the next level. Like, how do you get them taking those first steps comfortably? I think it's one of those things that you have to make them feel comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a lot of times that we've had friends over in the past and they're like, oh, you make that homemade? You don't buy simple syrup? I'm like, no, because it's the easiest thing you can make. You put sugar and water in a pot and you boil it. Look at that. It's done. Um, and just opening their eyes to things you can make. And like you said, the pre-made margarita mix, that's, it's so easy to make sour mix too. It's one of the simplest things you can do and fresh tastes so much better. And mm -hmm. so, you know, that's one of those things that we've really tried to compare, um, and bring that to people and say, Hey, if you make it with fresh ingredients, you're going to like it even more. And so, you know, that's one of the things that, you know, not just having friends over, we try to communicate that to our followers and the people that read our blog too. Hey, you can do this. It is easy to do. And so um, I would say it's the same thing with setting up a home bar, you know, and making sure you have basic tools. And, um, you know, cause like, I think we've always had like rocks glasses and I think we got highballs for our wedding, but I don't think we ever did anything with them. Um, and we're like, oh, that's for that. And so putting the two together and realizing that some cocktails go in certain glasses for a reason, because of you can put ice in this, you can put crushed ice in this, you know, just different, different ways to opening things up and explaining why things are the way they are. Absolutely. And I think, you know, um, always starting with something they're comfortable with, too, right? Mm -hmm. of like, oh, you like an old fashioned? Cool. Let yep. me show you how to work this old fashioned differently with the ingredients that you have um, and kind of like giving them that anchor to build off of. Um, I Absolutely. think that's really, really important of like, you already know this. Let's take it just, you know, maybe one step into the deeper water. And then next yep. thing you know, you're like making infusions and foams and <laughs> caviars. Well, and it's so funny to us sometimes too, how like friends will come over and really be like, hey, let's switch out this alcohol for this or these bitters for these. And they're like, oh my God, this is amazing. I'm like, I know. <laughs> right? You're just like, ah, got another one. All right. <laughs> so you're basically like the gateway drug of craft cocktails. Yeah, we, we call ourselves our friend's spirit guides. So it, it's just meant to be. We're like, we let us guide you. Let us help you out to where you want to go. What, what flavors do you want? We can get you there. So That's awesome. Very cool. So um, that being said, like, where would you kind of head them as far as like starting off with spirits? Um, are you kind of, do you think that they should have like a full bar with like a bunch of base spirits and a couple modifiers? Or do you kind of build up? Um, what's your approach on that? I honestly think if you start off with a basic five, if you've got a whiskey or a bourbon, a vodka, a tequila, um, a rum and a gin, I think you're pretty good to go. You can make basic drinks. Now, there's some you can build up from that. Mm -hmm. Like if you would get um, Campari, which I know is a learned flavor. A lot of people shy away from that. They're, oh, that's scary. It's bitter. I don't want that, you know. But that's a great one to start with too. And then you can go to sweet and dry vermouth because mm -hmm. those change a lot of cocktails too. And you can even go to scotch. It just depends if you like smoky. But I usually advise people to stick with like five to eight bottles of things they know they like. And that way they can build from there and add a bottle or two every so often if they want to try a new drink. 
Yeah, absolutely. I definitely agree with you on that as well. And uh, it's funny because like Campari, um, I, I remember my cousins who were 18 years old at the time, one of them was, uh, we went to Italy and they're like, oh, I'm in Italy. I'm going to buy a bottle of Campari because I'm 18 years old and that's what I do. And uh, it deceptively looks like candy. It does. You know, that big, bright, beautiful ruby red. Uh, and they couldn't even drink it. I'm like, yep. that's awesome. I'll take that bottle, by the way. Thank <laughs> you. And actually, that's another thing. If they don't like Campari, you can start them off with Aperol. And right. so there's just layers of different things you can try, you know, to see, hey, do you like this? Okay, if not, try this. Right. Absolutely. And then as far as like bar tools, uh, what do you recommend is just kind of a basic kit that everybody kind of should have if they're starting to dabble in, in cocktails at home? A shaker, obviously. I think everybody needs a shaker. Um, I also think, and we always laugh, like when we do cocktail, because we do cocktail classes here in town. Mm -hmm. And when we, when we go and we talk about, okay, this is a jigger and this is the size of this side and this side, you know, and we talk about what it is. And then they get to the Hawthorne strainer. They're like, what is this? Like, what? <laughs> And we're like, this is the thing that comes in your cocktail kit that you don't know what to do with. And then so we explain, this is for straining. You don't just do it out of the top of your shaker if you have a three-part, you know. It's one of those things that people don't know what to do with it. So if you explain what it is and how mm -hmm. you use it, it makes it a whole, it makes a lot more sense to them. Um, I also think if you have a muddler, especially if you like, um, you know, certain drinks like a mojito or a julep or whatever it may be, a, a muddler is a great thing to have. Um, yeah. Or, you know, in desperate times, you can use the back of a mixing spoon. I mean, that, <laughs> but it's, it's a good thing to have and they're not expensive. Um, probably another thing, like if you really want to get into it is a mixing glass. Um, I'm just going to start pulling bar tools out yeah. because I, I want to show everybody kind of what some of the things you're talking about here. Um, just throwing so, out words, aren't I? I mean, <laughs> what's that? I'm just throwing out words. <laughs> I know, right? So uh, here's a couple, oops, a couple different jiggers, a muddler, a mixing glass. Mm -hmm. um, they're all in copper at the moment, but right. cocktail shaker. And you said uh, popcorn strainer, right? Yes. Let me see. Oh, I ah. happen to have one here. So these are all the things so far that we've been talking about. Um, and if you're just listening on the podcast, definitely go check out YouTube or the show notes a little, little bit later, and we'll have links to all this. But um, so these are all the things we've talked about so far. Any, anything else? You know, unless they really want to get crazy with garnishes, a channel knife, but that, that also is another, these are all gateway drugs to that. So <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it's, it's funny cause like the more you kind of go down this road, um, I, I find it the same thing as like woodworking, like yep. the, the further you go down, the more re you realize you need more tools. Um, so you kind of got this like tool creep kind of going on, right? You're like, oh, I don't need it, but man, would that make it easier? That would be like, very nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yeah, absolutely. Um, perfect. And that looks like a really, really good start. I mean, you can do stirred cocktails here. Uh, you yep. can do shaking cocktails. You have plenty of, uh, you know, equipment for measuring and straining. Um, yeah, that looks like a great starter kit right there. That, those would be the things I would advise, um, especially if you're just starting out and then mm -hmm. you can go from there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, as far as like um, glassware, um, I am a glassware fiend. Um, we went out this weekend and I see bought- how many we have? <laughs> I, 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 it, it's a problem. I'm not even gonna lie. Like I have, we have a lot of spirits here, but man, we have probably more glassware than spirits. <laughs> I'm running out of room, if that tells you anything. <laughs> well, and this is something we're going to talk about in a second here, too. But, um, you know, with a starter kit, we can go down the rabbit hole of, you know, all these different types of glassware. But just bare bones stuff, uh, what do you recommend people start off with? I think a rocks glass, flat mm -hmm. out. Um, you know, they can serve even more purposes than just, you know, a basic drink on ice. Um, right. You can... You can even serve wine in them if you really want to. I mean, they they fill a lot of holes. Um, I would say a highball or a Collins glass. Yeah, because... I think I have one of those too. Yeah. <laughs> so you're just gonna start pulling everything out. <laughs> I want to make sure we we all know what we're talking about here. Um, but yeah, highball. We got a uh, rocks glass. What else have we got? Um, and I would say a Cooper a champagne glass, um, especially if you do sours or if you do anything that's served up that you don't want to get warm. 
Absolutely. Yeah. And this is probably one of the more kind of like go-to glasses, if I had to guess with, especially with shaking cocktails is this coupe. Yep. Um, and uh, yeah, definitely. And uh, anything else we're missing for just a kind of a bare bone starter kit for glass? I don't know. I, those are the three I really advise. I don't know if you have any that you really go to, but those are my three. Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, it it depends on the style of drinks you're having. Um, I think you mentioned this earlier. Um, you know, stirred cocktails are great. They can go in a bucket, um, but they all can also can go in more of a martini or a Nick and Nora. Mm -hmm. um, so I think to your point, though, is like this is going to get 90 percent of the job done because yep. um, you can serve a stirred cocktail in a coupe. Um, yep. You know, you might have a little bit more of a collar, but you just fill it up with more alcohol. It's not that bad. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> How is that a problem? <laughs> No problem for me. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I think that's a great starter kit uh, as well. So perfect. And uh, once again, this is kind of like entry level. So uh, I'm sure that's going to explode uh, later. <laughs> I can go into more glassware, but we don't need to go. <laughs> <laughs> so is there anything we missed as far as like setting up your home bar 101? Bitters. Bitters are scary for people but they're much needed. I call them our salt and pepper of the cocktail world. Yeah. And it's something they go, why do I need that? And I'm like, because you do, trust me. It can completely change the flavor of a cocktail. It can completely add flavor. It can make it less bitter. I mean, there's, even though it's bitter, it can make it less bitter. And so it's something that um, I'm actually working on right now is a whole post all about bitters and why they're needed and why you use them. And so that's something that I'm very passionate about. And um, just using them in a thoughtful way, I always encourage people to have at least a like Angostura bitters and an orange mm -hmm. bitters in their arsenal. So, And that's a great place to start because you can make most classic cocktails with those two bitters yep. Uh, yep. and really have some fun experimenting with uh, mixing them up and stuff too. Perfect. Great. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. And then, you know, if you decide that this is something you really enjoy and you want to kind of get more interested in, um, the sky's the limit as far as how much you can spend. Um, actually, that being said, what's on your kind of wish list? Money, oh. no object. What's the one thing you would love to have? Honestly, um, well, actually, I said this to Jay last night and he and I were talking about it. And I really... I really laughed because he goes, I would like a Klein Bell machine. Now, if you don't know what a Klein Bell machine is, for those of you <laughs> listening, it is a huge way to make clear ice. And it is like 300 pounds of ice. That is what he wants. If money was no object. <laughs> and I was like, and where would we put that? I don't know. Right, exactly. Yeah. And I think they have smaller ones. I actually interviewed uh, the guy from Klein. And uh, he said they have 50 pounders now, but still 50 pounds of ice. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's a good one. I think mine was a roto evaporator. A oh, evaporator. yeah. That but that's nice. like $15,000 oh. or mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's ridiculous. And honestly, for me, I would love to have an ice ball press, just a really nice one that would press on the bar. That would be, and mine's much cheaper than what Jay wants. So. <laughs> But they kind of work together. I can see his point. Yeah, you know, but the point is. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So we've talked a lot about items. We have a lot of items that we've collected here. Um, this brings up a really good point um, of where do we keep all this stuff now, <laughs> right? That is the problem. Um, little short story for you. So when okay. we first started this, we did not have a place to put stuff. We just didn't. We had like a bookshelf in the corner of our room. That was literally where stuff ended up in our dining room. And mm -hmm. then it grew and it grew and it grew. And then we started actually doing this and taking pictures. And then it moved up to our office upstairs and we were constantly running up and down and it was crazy. And we even have to store liquor in our laundry room that we called laundry room booze for like two years. I mean, it was just ridiculous because it was everywhere in our house. And Finally, last year, um, during COVID, we built a bar. And so our whole front room is now a bar in our studio. So now I have room, except now I'm running out of, I'm, I'm not sure how it happened, but I'm running out of room in said bar. So it's a question I'm still asking myself. <laughs> 
What's funny is so we run two different uh, Facebook groups, the Craft Cocktail Club and um, the Craft Bartender Group. Mm -hmm. uh, and in the Craft Cocktail Club, we asked, where do you look, take a look at your home bars? And it had everything like that makes the set look ridiculous, like nothing, mm -hmm. um, you know, just big, big build outs. And then there was one guy who started storing his alcohol and putting a bar where his water heater is in the cabinet of his, with his water heater. And I was like, That's he put like shelves in there and everything. I'm like, I mean, <laughs> I, I, give you, I, I give you credit, man. You're using every space, uh, yep. but you really can find a space for it pretty much anywhere. Yep. Um, would you recommend somebody, if they're just getting into this and starting to run into constraints on space, do you think a bar cart is a good starting yes. point? Yes, I do. Um, I think a bar cart is great. Um, you can put glassware on there. You can put your bottles on there. You can put, you know, even if you have bar books, they look really cool. If they're next to your alcohol, you mm -hmm. can make it look really cool. And as you start to expand, maybe think about a bigger wine cabinet or something like that. Um, but I think a bar cart is a great way to start off. It's small, it can, but it can look really classy in the corner of a room. It can, it can make a statement in your house. It can be a pretty piece. Yeah, and I think that um, bar carts don't get wasted. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if especially if you go down your route and you build a bar now, you've gone and kind of got up that progression, you still have a bar cart. So if you're yep. entertaining people on your patio or something like that, or you can load it up with a couple ingredients, put some yep. ice on there, it out there. Glasses, <laughs> go enjoy <Yep>. the sun. <laughs> They're very handy. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and at what point do you think it's uh, a good idea to start investing in refrigeration, ice machines? Yeah, see, we still don't have the ice machine. I'm working on that one. And apparently my husband wants a Klein Bell, so I don't know how this is going to work. But, um, you know, we actually had a whole extra fridge for our syrups and our vermouths and you know all the stuff we had to keep in the fridge and then the whole freezer was full of ice and that was downstairs in our basement um that's just something if you really start getting into this you might need to look at and it doesn't have to be a huge fridge it can be a little even apartment size one or you know a medium size one um but if it's something where you're entertaining a lot or you're doing stuff like this it may be something that you want to look at just because it will take over your fridge i promise it really will um i can 100% agree. Just the vermouth and like mixers alone is kind of its own fridge, right? Yeah. Um, and then we went to a friend's house uh, like two weeks ago and she had a countertop pellet ice maker. Oh. And it was the coolest thing. I was like, I don't know what it costs, but I'm like, I want one so badly. Uh -huh. no. <laughs> I'm like, I just go to Sonic. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. And it was quick and quiet and all the things. I was like, all right, I think I'm going to get one of those for Christmas. Yeah, it, so. it's list for Christmas so <laughs> I think our, our I think our uh, Christmas lists are probably pretty close if I had to guess probably <laughs> all right um so you kind of talked about building out your bar um during COVID and you've kind of gone that step and, and kind of committed to that using that yes. space um how did you go about it because that's a big project it was. Um, we kind of had to go with the space with what we had. And we mm -hmm. knew, like, we did not really use our front room for anything. I mean, it was kind of just a catch-all. And it just wasn't something, because I'm looking at it right now, like, we just did not really do anything with it. Um, and so we were like, you know what? How crazy would we be to turn this whole room into our studio and our bar? And it's ironic because it's like the first thing people see when they walk into our house. And I'm like, yeah, we're those people, you know? <laughs> But it's a business for us, too. So it's not weird. But for us, like, we really started looking at what we wanted. Um, I was very much wanting, like, bright cabinets and stuff for, I mean, they look good in pictures, but also at the same time, that's what people are wanting right now. Right. And so I wanted something. And so I would jump on Pinterest, and I would Google, and I would look on Instagram. And it was a good three months before we decided what we wanted. And... Mm -hmm. Um, then we actually had a gentleman here in town who makes cabinets. And so we got in touch with him and he basically did it all for us custom and built it actually into the wall and built us shelves and the whole thing. And it, I'm very, very proud of it. So, um, but it's something that if it's something 
somebody wants to do, just don't jump right into it. Uh, make sure it's something you like because it is a part of your house. It's like building a kitchen almost. And so it has to be something you enjoy and it's something, you know, that you're going to like for many years to come. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, there's a whole, I mean, deciding to build a bar is the first step of many hundreds of steps and decisions that you have to make. I mean, everything from size to style to location to, you know, how much it's going to be able to store, if you're going to put a sink in there and running water, there's so much that goes into it. So oh, um, much. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty incredible. Um, yeah, absolutely. So definitely, I think Pinterest is a great one. Instagram, you know, looking at other people's bars. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's where I got a lot of my inspiration for when we did, the, this is the second bar we had. The yep. first bar we had was very similar to yours. It was in our dining room. Mm -hmm. um, and it was a set and, you know, we did a lot of filming and stuff, but it worked in that space and it was really yep. cool. Um, yep. But then we had kids and we're like, you know, two and four years old now and they're curious about everything. And um, one of them just likes grabbing everything he can possibly touch. So we're like, okay, we got to put this stuff away. <laughs> so. It can be a hazard. I'm not going to lie. Like our kids have grown up with it. I mean, from the time our littlest was a baby, we had, you know, bottles and glassware all over the house. Right. But it's one of those things they know it's mom and dad's business and they just know not to even go in there because I will probably start screaming at them because <laughs> there's things out and I don't want things broken. So no throwing right. balls in this part of the house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think there was another one, uh, another website that I went to for inspiration called, I, I know, I don't know how to say it, but it's house, H-O-U-Z-Z. -Z. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and important. that was a good one, but that is like money, no object kind of bar. Yeah. This is yep. not like I'm going to throw something up on a wall and, you know, in my living room. This is like my basement's going to get turned into this really elaborate speakeasy. Um, yes. Yeah. Money was an object in our. <laughs> and it gets expensive quickly. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, perfect. So I think uh, just last couple questions here. Um, any words of wisdom for anybody that's starting out just getting into craft cocktails? Just do it. Find what you like. Um, go with even things that you used to order in college. Try them again. Mm -hmm. um, just try things. See what you like. You are going to make some bad ones. I promise you it's happened. As as Chris has said, he's made some bad ones too. Um, wow. you know, and you're, you're just going to make terrible ones. You are. But try. Just see what you like. Find what's easy for you, what's easy to make when you entertain, what you can offer people. And it's just, to me, it's, it's hospitality and it's part of entertaining. And we literally, like when we have people over, our bar is their bar and they can mm -hmm. experiment, they can do what they want. They can ask to taste certain things. I have no issue with that. If you're going to explore with me, I am there. And I, and that's the same thing we want on our blog. We want people to try things. We want them to, you know, immerse themselves in something that they've never tried before and see if they like it. Absolutely, yeah. And I think the more hospitable you are, make it easy to kind of come into the space, I think it's the more contagious it is and the mm -hmm. more people can get excited about it. Um, so I have another quick question for you. I actually have a couple more quick questions for you. First of all, um, I'm gonna go ahead and start with my own story, but I'd love to hear what your worst cocktail creation was. And I'll give you some time to think about it as I tell my story here. So the worst cocktail I've ever created was for a contest. It was very early on in my mixology career. And um, the focus was olive. It was an olive festival. Okay. Um, so my restaurant wanted me to come up with this idea uh, for a cocktail that would win this competition. Sure. So um, I was like, oh, everybody loves dirty martinis and everybody loves blue cheese stuffed olives. So I'm going to marry those two and figure out how to, how to make this really cool dirty martini with a blue cheese foam on top. And I was like, I have a chef. I have a pastry chef at my disposal, I can figure this out, no problem. It was the worst, most vile thing I've ever had in my entire life. It tasted like briny sweat socks in the worst possible way. <laughs> like the blue cheese foam, since it's dairy based, would start leaking and seeping into the cocktail. <laughs> and it would be like dropping. It looked, it looked like, excuse my language here, bird droppings in my this dirty martini. And it was the most vile thing I've ever created in my entire life. Um, so that was one. And then I tried to kind of twist on it and like, okay, well that sucked. Let me try something else and do like a blue cheese 
dehydrated rim, which was god awful. <laughs> oh no! It was terrible. All of it was gross. So I scrubbed all that, and I actually turned out to have a pretty good uh, cocktail at the end of the day. I made a uh, pear and absinthe, basically a sour. Uh, oh sure. A pear syrup and a splash of absinthe, and I think I did. Um, uh, just a splash of olive brine in there to kind of boost all the flavors, and it was fantastic. It was really, really good. Um, but yeah, that was the worst cocktail I've ever made in my entire life. So, <laughs> would you like to share? <laughs> well, it's funny because I'm sitting here thinking, and I'm like, trust me, we have made some really, really bad, bad things. But I think the one that sticks out in my head the most, and I cannot tell you the one of the two ingredients we put together. I think I blocked it out because it was that bad. Um, but I know it, the one ingredient we had was like a Serrano infused tequila and it was spicy. Like it burned going down. It, I mean, I, my mouth was on fire for like five minutes after, I mean, it was hot. So we are like, okay, you know, to battle this heat, you know, we'll take it down a little bit. And I wanna say for some reason we thought using an Amaro would be a great idea. <laughs> It was not. Oh, I no. you, we made an atomic bomb and tried to kill ourselves. It was like, I, I don't know what happened, but Jay and I were standing in the kitchen, both crying because <laughs> it hurt so bad. Like, I don't know what, like, and there we are like chugging glasses of milk. Like it was the worst thing we've ever done. And he just looked at me and goes, we can never do that again. I said, no, <laughs> we can't. <laughs> oh, that's so good. <laughs> Lessons learned, right? Lesson learned. <laughs> <laughs> it, what do they say? It's not, it's not the, uh, it's the journey. It's not the destination, right? Correct. Correct. Because if it was the journey, it would be a hot mess and nobody would want to be in it. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you for that, by the way. Uh, I, I feel like the, the successes are easy to talk about, but I think the real interesting stuff is the failures. Like, let's talk about some of that. That's cool. <laughs> about those all day but that was the worst one <laughs> right yeah so kind of the opposite side of that spectrum you know we've talked about the worst thing we've ever created what's the best drink you've ever had um i told you this before we started recording but actually the cocktail that sent me into my journey with doing cocktails on the blog and doing this as my full-time job was actually a truffle oil pear juice and lemon cocktail that i had at bizarre meat in Las Vegas with uh, Joel, uh, not Joel, with Jose Andres. And we actually went for our 10th anniversary to Vegas. Mm -hmm. And I had this drink thinking, truffle oil in a cocktail, I have to order it. And it was like the first time that I had had a savory cocktail. It blew my mind. It absolutely blew my mind. And I was like, and then it was like right after we got back, that's when we um, had made the first cocktail on the blog and it spun everything out. And that is the best cocktail I have ever had in my life. We actually have a version of it on the blog. We couldn't get it quite just like his. It's really close, but it's it's not quite the same, but it's really good. And so that sent me on this journey. So I, it's it's very fond in my heart. So. And you mentioned that your husband had another one too, right? He does. Um, what was it? I see. I wrote notes because I can't remember his. I only remember mine. Um, but he had, and it was actually at Pacific Cocktail Haven in San Francisco. Um, and it was the extra fancy. And it was bourbon, orgeat, blueberry, creme yvette, and bitters. And Ooh. it was this beautiful, like, almost purple maroon color. And because we have a picture of it and um, of course we do, but um, it's, it's one of those things that it's stuck in his brain as those flavors went together. And so, you know, it inspired him for a lot of things and he's a whiskey and scotch guy. And so for him, it was just like, Oh, I could put that together and that together. And it, that's just his favorite. And so those are, those were pivotal cocktails. <laughs> yeah, no. And uh, the guy that runs that Pacific Cocktail Haven is mm -hmm. phenomenal at flavors. Yep. He's probably one of the best in the business on it. Yep. And I think they won a best bars like one or two years ago, if I'm not mistaken. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. That's really cool. Um, and I think for me early on, mine was a Sazerac, like a really yeah. beautifully made Sazerac yep. is like this incredible symphony. Um yep. And it's just so orchestrated and so well-timed that um, 
when it's done properly, I think it's probably one of the most remarkable cocktails, um, yep. in my opinion. Um, yeah. Oh, so, yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. And like when we're at home, and I think I said this too, like when we're at home, he will make a version of a Black Manhattan, and that's his go-to. And it's, you know, with, uh, usually he does uh, um, whatever, whiskey and Amaro, whatever Amaro we have on hand that he likes, and then just bitters. And that's his go-to. And he'll switch it up because he'll use different kinds together but that's his favorite. And I can always go back to my truffle oil cocktail. So, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I think mine is kind of my standard is uh, just a classic Manhattan uh, bourbon or rye, depending on what I have yep. a really nice Carpano Antica vermouth uh, and a couple dashes of bitters. Like that is my happy place yep. right there. Yep. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so is there anything that you're working on that you would love to share? I don't want a vague book here, um, but like, you know, vague booking on Facebook that somebody posts something and it doesn't quite make sense, but I'm going to do that here because we are working on something and I can't really say what it is yet, but I'm really no. excited about it. And I think it will be something great. And I can't wait to write a post and post on social media about it. So well, definitely let us know and we'll, we'll uh, definitely help uh, any way we can. Um, and then one thing I, I would love to promote for you. Um, is if you go on their blog, uh, I think it's gastronblog.com, if I'm not mistaken, correct? Yep. Um, they have a fantastic guide to glassware. Um, so if you are just getting started um, in your cocktail journeys, definitely head on over there and um, check out that glass guide. I promise you it is beautiful and it's real purposeful and you're, you're going to get some good, um, good recommendations out of that guide. Um, so I'd highly recommend checking out their blog, their Instagram, uh, and uh, taking a look for that for sure. Um, and then I think we kind of covered this, but, uh, where can people see more of your work? <laughs> um, as you just said, yes, <laughs> blog.com. That was, that was a great plug. Um, and actually if you sign up for the newsletter, you'll just get the glassware guide automatically. It'll just come to your email and it's, it's there. Um, and then, um, we are on Facebook, Pinterest, and Twitter, I think is gastronom blog, um, Instagram or gastronom cocktails. And then. I'm trying to break into TikTok and it's not really working, but we're the gastronom over there. So yeah, for me, I feel like I'm generally generationally too old for TikTok. Like I'm just not there yet, but I think we have to figure it out as well. So I'm gonna make a bunch of silly videos out there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Leah. I definitely appreciate your time and definitely your expertise. Um, one last question before we leave. I promise this is the last one. Three bottles, three spirits that you love, that you're go-to, you have to have in your house at all times. Oh boy, you put me on the spot. Um, I know, that, I threw it out there. You see. Okay, so see, I'm looking over at my bar again, which, did you want to see it? Do I, need I do, to if, you have the, if you have a chance, okay. I would love to. So I'm not promising it's clean. It's kind of a mess right now. So uh, let me give you my bottles first. So I would say I love Junipera Gin. I have to have that at all times. It is my absolute favorite. Mm -hmm. um, I love any of the expressions of Uncle Nearest. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. And honestly, I, I don't think I could live without any of the Kohana rums either. Oh, I'm good right. choice. <laughs> That's cool. All right. I love it. Well, we'll have links to all those on the, on the uh, show notes for sure. But of course. Fine showing so, us. so, okay. We're going to go on a little tour. I don't promise my house is clean, but because I do have kids, please remember that. <laughs> <laughs> but behind oh, the ceiling is, let me see if I can get a good shot. I love it. The bar and all the bottles up there. <laughs> I love the shelves. Those, those... Thank you. Beautiful. So I'm going to describe it for people that are listening to the podcast. Um, and hopefully I can do it justice. So you have a really brilliant, like Navy blue. It's actually like an ocean blue here. I don't know if I can get you a. It's really bright, beautiful, vibrant blue. Um, you have some nice wood countertops, uh, beautiful grain on it. Um, and a couple of floating shelf um, bookshelves as well. Um, and just an absolute mind-numbing amount of spirits <laughs> even everything <laughs> <laughs> i believe it <laughs> um but thank you storage and that yeah it's mm. 
That's very, very cool. So thank you for the tour uh, and thank you for all the pointers. Um, like I said, we'll have uh, links into everything we talked about, recipes, bottles, all in the show notes over at, um, you know what? It used to be on mixologytalk.com, but now it's probably a bar above. So go check that out. <laughs> all of this just changed. Um, but thank you so much, Leah. We definitely appreciate it. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. So once again, thank you to Leah uh, for joining us and giving us her insights and perspective on starting a brand new bar at home. Uh, we have a lot of show notes that we're gonna add to this, uh, so definitely check them out. I believe it's gonna be on a barabove.com, um, but you can definitely find the podcast there. Um, so we'll have some more podcasts for you guys in the future, uh, but until then, I hope you guys stay safe and are having some great cocktails. Cheers. Cheers.